most of the saints are remembered for some outstanding virtue or devotion which they practiced. But Saint Jerome is frequently remembered for his bad temper. It is true that he had a very bad temper, but his love for God and his son Jesus Christ was extraordinarily intense too. Jerome was one of the most important scholars of the early Christian church. His translation of the Bible into Latin would become the standard edition throughout the Middle Ages, and his viewpoints on monasticism would be influential over the centuries. The man who came to be known as St. Jerome was born as Eusebius Sophronius Hieronymusen around the year 345 in Striden, Dalmatia, possibly in modern-day Bosnia and Herzegovina. The son of a well-off Christian couple, he began his education at home, tutored by his father. Little else is known of his childhood, other than his parents were probably well-to-do and Christian. Despite their efforts to raise Jerome properly, the young man behaved as he chose. Around the age of 12 or so, Jerome traveled to Rome to study grammar, philosophy, and rhetoric. He built his own library, diligently copying most of the works he read. They were composed primarily of the pagan classics. Toward the end of his schooling, he was formally baptized, it is assumed by the Pope himself. Now interested in theological matters, Jerome set aside time to pursue matters of the faith. He went to Aquileia and joined a group of fervent Christians that had formed around Bishop Valerian. He described them as a choir of blesseds. He then left for the east and lived as a hermit in the desert of Chalcis, focusing entirely on studying the scriptures. He also began to translate books for his own use. His goal was to build a personal library. Meditation, solitude, and contact with the Word of God helped Jerome's Christian sensibility to mature. Although he lived in a rock cave, he had retained his expanding library, adding the works of Christian authors. After he emerged from his hermitage, Jerome was quickly embroiled in conflicts within the church at Antioch. Jerome made clear that he did not want to become a priest, preferring instead to be a monk or a hermit. But church officials in Antioch, as well as Pope Damasus, wanted him to be ordained. Jerome relented on the condition he would not be expected to serve in any ministry and would still be allowed to pursue his monastic life. In 397, St. Jerome was ordained a priest and began his life as a biblical scholar. Making the most of his freedom as a priest, Jerome traveled to Constantinople, where he studied under St. Gregory of Nazianzus, who was famous as a great theologian. He translated scripture directly from Hebrew and organized a workshop dedicating himself to the Bible and theology. By 382, he returned to Rome and Pope Damasus appointed him as secretary and librarian. He was also commissioned to render the Bible into Latin. This elegant writing and asceticism, together with friends, promised great things. While in Rome, Jerome led classes for noble Roman women, widows and virgins, who were interested in the monastic life. He also wrote tracts defending the idea of Mary as a perpetual virgin, 
and opposing the idea that marriage was just as virtuous as virginity. Jerome found much of the Roman clergy to be lax or corrupt and did not hesitate to say so. This made him very unpopular and made a number of enemies. While Pope Damasus was alive, he could shield Jerome from criticism. But in 384, Pope Damasus died. This exposed Jerome to criticism and controversy. Both prominent pagans who resented his promotion of the faith and fellow Christians who lacked his wit attacked him with vicious rumors. Then, in 385, he left Osta for Antioch. A few months later, a number of virgins and widows traveled to Antioch, where they met Jerome. The party settled in Bethlehem, where a monastery and convent were established. This was the beginning of his literary period and where he remained until his death. It was in Bethlehem that he began his productive literary period, both his biblical commentaries and his work on the Latin Bible. Jerome translated most of the Old Testament from Hebrew and some from Greek. Also, he wrote scriptural commentaries, biographies, a history of writers, and corresponded greatly. He also preached, held conferences, and taught the young. His greatest achievement was, of course, the translation of the Bible, still used by the Catholic Church, and setting the standard for the King James Version 1,200 years later. With the influx of barbarism, his world became dangerous. Rome was sacked. Huns and pagans invaded and destroyed houses of learning. Jerome was a hard worker, and he wrote extensively defending the virginity of Mary, which some clerics dared to question. Jerome was easily upset, and even the venerable St. Augustine exchanged words with him. Eventually, Jerome and Augustine repaired their relationship and were able to correspond as friends and colleagues. Once, when he was asked if Catholics worship saints or their relics, he said, We do not worship the relics of the saints, but honor them in our worship of him whose saints they are. We honor the servants in order that the respect paid to them may be reflected back to the Lord. Honoring them, he said, was not idolatry because no Christian had ever adored the saints as gods. On the other hand, they pray for us. If the apostles, saints, and martyrs, while still living on earth, could pray for other men, how much more may they do it after their victories? Have they less power now that they are with Jesus Christ? In the year 410, Rome was sacked by Arlac the Barbarian. One of Jerome's greatest friends, Paula, died very soon as well. These events distressed Jerome greatly. Violence eventually found its way to Bethlehem disrupting Jerome's work in his final years. Jerome died in 419 and was buried under the Church of the Nativity, close to the site of the birth of Jesus. Now his relics rest in the Basilica of Santa Maria Maggiore in Rome. Unlike his contemporaries, the bishops Ambrose and Augustine, Jerome was not widely recognized as a saint in his own age or for a long time afterwards. His followers grew in the 14th century as the saint was adopted across Europe by remarkable, varied groups and clerics. 
we can learn from the life of St. Jerome's life to love the Word of God in sacred scripture. The saint said, ignorance of the scriptures is ignorance of Christ. It is therefore important that every Christian live in contact and in personal dialogue with the Word of God given to us in sacred scripture. St. Jerome is the patron saint of librarians and translators.